So for this video guys, I'm going to be reacting to another stand-up clip and this one's from Norm Macdonald. This is a 12-minute joke. My first time watching Norm Macdonald, so let's check it out. Hopefully it's funny and we'll have a little discussion after. Let's go. <laughs> now listen, man, I like the news. You guys like the news? <laughs> I always watch the news and I'll tell you something about the news. I don't understand it. <laughs> but it's for some reason I watch it. I don't even know why. But uh, I think I'm supposed to or something. So I'll watch it, and then the guy will come on and he'll go, anyways, today the deficit. And I'll go, ah, I've heard that word. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy goes, today the Na Dow Jones NASDAQ Composite Index is uh, down. And then I go, ah, that's not good. <laughs> down. Up. I like when it's up. <laughs> That's my opinion on that. <laughs> Seems like there's too much news, like, you know, because now they have 24-hour news. Now, when I was a young boy, the news was half a hour. That was the whole news, you know. And a guy would come on, and he'd have a tie, you know, and shit, and he would say the news. And it was a half a hour long. Now, it's 24 hours long. Now, it turns out that back in the old days, when it was only half an hour, they had it about right. That's about all the news there is. <laughs> Even then, there'd always be like a story, some fucking story at the end about a caribou or some horse shit. So, there wasn't even enough to fill the half an hour. 24 hours, way too long. So they have to keep repeating stories all the time and everything, and uh, they'll make up stories, you know? They do that a lot, make up things that aren't really news stories, but they have to, you know, fill the 24 hours, you know? And the one I notice that they make up a lot, uh, this is the latest one I've seen, I see this all the time on the news. The newsman will come on, he'll go, he'll go, good evening, everybody, this is the newsman, whatever he says, he's not gonna say that. <laughs> and he goes, our top story tonight, a lady has vanished. <laughs> That's the story. And then he goes, let's go outside where there's another guy. So then they cut to outside. <laughs> then there's a out guy outside and he's like, hey, listen, how's it going inside? <laughs> We're outside and uh, we found out about this lady that vanished. Her name was Janice. And uh, they found her car here in the Taco Bell parking lot. And uh, don't worry about the car, it's fine. But uh, <laughs> can't find hiding her hair of the lady. <laughs> well, back to you. <laughs> so, so then you're watching, you go, well, I don't give a fuck on account I never knew Janice in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm kind of happy it's Janice and not somebody I know. <laughs> But then what they do is they start telling you about Janice, you know? And they go, hey, we got Sam found out some cool things about Janice. And you're like, no, that's cool. I don't want to hear it. They go, no, no, you want to hear it. <laughs> they can't help themselves. So they go, let's go back to Bill. He's, uh, he's uh, still outside. And uh, how's it going, Bill? And Bill's like, it's all right. It's no inside, but it's cool. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Anyways, we found out about Janice. Turns out she's a good lady. And uh, we found some friends of hers, and here they are. And then, sure enough, they show a lady, and it says, friend of Janice. And uh, she says, I'll tell you something about Janice. You want to hear about Janice? Janice is a type of lady that you could always turn to. You know, you ever want to turn to somebody? Like, if you got a problem or something, and you, you, know, you, know, you feel like you want to turn? <laughs> you ever do that? Or maybe your neck just hurts and you want it anyways. The point of it is that once you had swiveled your head over this way, the person you'd most want to see in your eyeline would be Janice. <laughs> and then they have Jan another friend of Janice that wasn't the first one. And she'll go, I'll tell you, Janice, oh my God. She was the type of lady that she could walk into a room and light up the whole room, you know? And she didn't have a fucking lighter, not like that. She would... <laughs> 
just somehow, through sheer tyranny of will, she could somehow uh, illuminate a room. I don't know. And that'd be Janice's third friend lady that's not one of the earlier two. And then she goes, I'll tell you about Janice. Is that who you're asking me about, Janice? <laughs> Janice was the type of lady that you could be talking to your best friend in a whole world. And then Janice come in and you go, fuck you, I'm talking to Janice. Because <laughs> Janice is better than you. Come on, let's face it. She's better than all of us. So anyways, then you're at home and you start liking Janice. You know what I mean? You start getting invested in her, you go, God damn, that Janice is a cool lady. I would, I would like to meet her one day. That would be a lot of, fuck, I forgot she vanished. <laughs> ah, just my luck. <laughs> They'll find her. <laughs> then you get hope. That's not good. I don't give a fuck what Obama says. Hope is never good. <laughs> Don't try it. It never works out. So you go, you go, oh man, they'll find Janice. They're putting pictures up of her on telephone poles. I think that had worked once. And, and then the news keeps showing you more things about Janice, you know? And they'll show you like the video, home videos of her. You're like, God damn, look at that. She's eating a pizza. I like her hair like that. They'll find her. And then you become obsessed with Janice. It's all you can think of, you know? You're at work, fucking just can't wait to get home, agonizing over Janice, you know? <laughs> thinking about her with eating pizza and shit. And then you go home, and your nights are just a fevered dreams of, you know, Janice and bangs and shit like that. And, and you, all you can do is turn on the TV and hope and, you know, and then one day, you know, they go, hey, more news on Janice. Here's the Bill. He's still outside. And then Bill is like outside and he's like, here we are. Uh, where, as you can see behind me, they are scouring the woods. They're still searching for Janice, you know? And then you go, oh, fuck, not the woods. <laughs> no, <that's> not, <laughs> Nothing good ever happens in the woods. <laughs> I've seen enough of these fucking stories to know <laughs> that Janice ain't coming bounding out of the woods anytime soon. <laughs> it's like, hey, what's going on, everybody? I, I'm just taking a stroll through the woods. <laughs> what are you taking my picture for? I was just, just, I just take a stroll through the scraggly woods. <laughs> Now, if they find you in the woods, they always find you in the same place. Every time, they will find you in a uh, shallow grave. <laughs> I don't know why they don't just look there in the first place. That's, if I was the police chief, I'd go, listen, I want every shallow grave in the vicinity checked out. I want to clear up this case by Tuesday on account of... I'm running for DA or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, doesn't shallow grave seem a mite rash? You know, if, like these serial killers are supposed to be so shrewd and cunning and everything, you know? At least according to the TV movies I've seen. And, uh, but then when it comes time for the grave, they get a little hasty, you know? <laughs> Oh, like, there you go, three twigs and a leaf. That ought to do it. <laughs> that doesn't look like Janice anymore. I don't recall Janice ever wearing three leaves and a twig. Oh, well. Guess I'll go home and await the authorities now. You gotta prepare these things, you know? You gotta be a little smarter than that. You know, what I would do, and I would never, ever kill a lady in cold blood. <laughs> I wouldn't. I know I say that now. I don't really know. I can't predict the future, but I don't believe. That. I know there's no river long enough doesn't contain a bend, but I believe that right now, and it might just be vanity, I don't think I would, uh, I would kill a woman in cold blood. But if I did, I would plan it out. 
very carefully, you know, because there's a lot at stake. You know, you think about it, you probably, you know, probably lose your job. I don't know what happens. <laughs> That's a blemish on the old CV, you know? <laughs> Even in today's enlightened society, there remains a stigma to being a uh, psychosexual sadist. <laughs> But uh, what I would do is I would, like, I would look at the lady, I would select a lady, and then I would follow her habits. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I would watch her very carefully, you know? And I'd go, hey, I notice that every day she goes to that cheese sandwich shop, and then she comes out with a little paper bag. I'll bet you anything there's a cheese sandwich in there. You know? So then I'd keep that in my head, you understand? And I'd say, hey, I notice every Wednesday evening she goes with her other lady friends and they go down to the YWCA and they play basketball with each other, which is fine nowadays, you know? <laughs> so what I would do is on Wednesday I would go down to the YWCA and what would I be uh, holding in my right hand in the parking lot but a cheese sandwich. <laughs> So then she would eventually come out of the YWCA, you know, all sweaty with her, uh, you know, her ridiculous three-colored ball and everything there, you know? And then I'd be standing there. And then she'd go, hey, what's in your right hand? And I'd go, nothing? I'd be coy, you know? And she'd go, she'd go, there's something in your right hand. I'd go, listen, lady, who knows more about what's in their right hand? You or me? I believe, oh, this. <laughs> now, this is just a cheese sandwich. Why, you like it or something? What's... I got a whole fucking van full of them over there. Right over there. Yeah, yeah the, that craziest looking fucking van you ever saw. That's filled with cheese sandwiches. You don't have to have cheese sandwiches in the van, by the way. If you want. Uh, unless you want to be known for your detailed work, it's not, it's not really necessary. Then, I would get the lady in the van and I would drive her to a remote area. An area most known for its remoteness. That's what I would look for. And anyways, I'd take her to the remote area where I had constructed a shed. And then I would get her in there and I would do that thing that makes me feel like God. And, uh, and then her screams would just bounce off the walls and echo out into nowhere and never touch the ear of civilized man again. And then I would take her body to the woods and bury her in a very, very, very deep grave. <laughs> Norm Macdonald. First time watching him as a stand-up comedian. I always see him pop up in random movies playing random roles so I kind of already knew who he was. I just didn't know he was a stand-up comedian and I like his, his like his comedy style. It seems like he's very realistic and very practical. Um, when he was talking about the news, very real stuff about the news. It's just they overkill news stories. They keep them running too long and most of the news stories themselves are just filled with filler. Um, stuff we don't really need to know. And he just pretty much crystallized that perfectly in this little segment or in this little set. So great stuff by Norm Macdonald. As usual, I'm going to be doing a lot more reactions to a lot more of his stand-up and a lot more stand-up reactions in general. So let me know in the comment section who you guys want to see, and I'll try and get to them ASAP. Don't worry, I will get to them eventually, guys. So let a brother know who you guys want to see. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video because it helps the channel and it helps the videos grow a lot faster. But I'm going to wrap this video up, guys. So take care of yourself. Stay safe because it is a crazy world and there are a lot of crazy people. But most importantly, guys, peace.